Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Liz and this is Let's Get Lizical where we do everything card making. Today I'm introducing you to my North Pole background die. This die includes a frame with clouds and a like snowy hill and a North Pole sign that you can layer together for more dimension. Um, so right now I'm just separating the die from the tape. Again, these come pre-cut, so you don't need to worry about that. And then there are pieces for the backer of the stripes. Uh, I'm cutting the stripes in two different colors. I'm going to do it in red and white. You can ignore the stripes and cut the pole in like a different color if you want. Um, there's also a sign where the words North Pole are embossed into the sign and you'll see what I do with that a little bit later and there's also like the like knob at the top of the pole which is uh, comes in two pieces there's like the whole piece and then there's another layer for like just the like rounded piece so you could layer that up you could add more dimension with a little bit of foam tape it's a very small section but you can still do it even if you just cut extra layers um, just to give it more dimension. I love this background die. Um, originally I was going to go for something different, but this ended up coming about. And there's just like so much more you can do with this as well. Um, you don't just have to use it for this purpose. Um, I have, again, a list of ideas I want to do with this. You can do it with or without the pull. You just have to cut it off. You can cut the frame sides off, do it in portrait mode and just use the clouds at the top and the hill and the sign at the bottom or not even use the sign and just make like a different kind of snowy scene. I have ideas for other types of scenes for these shaker cards, whatnot, you know, the sky's the limit with this. Again, think outside the box with any and all dies that you have. You don't have to use them the way that they're intended. You can alter them however you need. Um, obviously within the parameters of the die like this, I can't make it into a slim line. Um, but I can, again, make this into a portrait mode. I would just have to cut off the sides and then like move the clouds up and then the snowy hills down further, obviously. Um, and then you could also add a new frame to this if you wanted to and still make it into a shaker card. You just have to create that new frame. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I cut out the background as a whole and then I'm going to use some like textured paper. You can use like linen paper or the velvet paper you can get um, just to give the clouds a bit of texture. And then I'm just going to trim off these. This second one that I trimmed here, you should always trim from the pattern out instead of trying to trim from the outside in. This one I got didn't get cut as rounded as I wanted to, but you'll see me flip all my pieces around so that I'm cutting them correctly for that hill. So cut from the inside out. I also do the same again for the hill, but I did it in like an iridescent glitter cardstock that I got from Simon. I don't think they have this available, but I'll link something similar down below. This is going to be more of a like night sky scene. And to me, my favorite part about snow in winter is when it gets sparkly under the street lights and that's what I try to mimic when I'm doing you know these types of snowy hills with the glitter paper. So what I'm doing now is I added some foam tape to the clouds just to give them a bit more dimension. You could do the same thing to the snow at the bottom. I just glued my down flat and then now I'm going to glue all these um, stripes onto the pole. Again I didn't um, include like embossed lines or anything for placement. I would just start from the bottom and work your way to the top. The top does kind of come up underneath that knob at the top. So working from the bottom upwards is how I would go about doing this. Um, again, you don't have to cut the stripes. You could cut this in like a craft cardstock, make it look like a wooden pole. Um, I like the traditional Christmas stripes, which is why I included it in the set. And I'm um, just, you know, squeezing them here onto the template. I think mine were a little bit crooked just because I was trying to rush through this video. But now I'm just going to add on that top part. Again, it's in two pieces, but they're connected for the die so that you only have to cut once and you don't have to fiddle with little tiny dies. I'm going to try to do that as much as possible 
with my dyes going forward, connecting whatever needs to be connected color-wise in like my intentions for the dye. And um, I, I just find it a much, much easier to do it that way. Um, right now I'm ink blending on the North Pole sign and I'm using latte and cappuccino ink, I think, from Simon. And then I'm going to take this black marker because I, my gel pens were all crap. They're all old. They don't work well. So I didn't have my gold gel pen with me. I just bought some new ones. So next time I'll do it with that. And that's probably how I would have done this one if I had one available. But um, again, it, the North Pole is embossed into that piece. So what I do just to give it a bit of color is um, take either a felt tip marker or again a gel pen and like kind of like color in those grooves uh, it just helps bring out the sign a little bit better you could always if you wanted to do a different type of sign cut a little square that would fit in the same area and then stamp something onto it but um, for this one I just embossed it so it was easier for you to follow along and like write in the words with a guide so right now I'm going to ink blend the background Again, I'm using Simon's Positively Saturated Inks, and I'm using the Morning, Twilight, and Galaxy Trio. It's a little bit more of a purpley blue. It doesn't look like that in the camera here, but um, they are much more on the purple side than the original one that I showed at the beginning of the video. I think for that one, I used the Marine, Cadet, and Royal color combo. Um, so this one, I thought I would just try something a little bit different. And this one kind of gives it a bit more of a you know, stormy look to it, I guess, like that, like winter storms coming through. And then again, with these inks, because they're water reactive, I'm just going to splatter the background with water. I'm going to set it aside to let it dry. And then when we come back to it later, I'm going to add some controlled snow to the background using some white acrylic paint from the dollar store. But first I need a sentiment. The Santa that I have is pre-colored from a little while ago, so I just decided to use that. Again, same colorway as I used on Monday's video. Um, so you can just refer to that if you want for coloring. I'm just going to stamp the little happy ho ho holidays sentiment. It's kind of somewhat sassy, I guess. Like Santa could be saying it with a sarcastic tone, especially since I decided to go with the more sassy Santa look. And then I was going to use the banner from Lawn Fawn Swivel Surprise die set. Realized I need to cut it first because it's not an open die. It's solid. And then I'm going to scrap this in the end anyway. I didn't stamp it perfectly in the middle. So I just decided to go back to the original one that I stamped. And then I'll just cut that out with a pair of scissors and fishtail it manually. Um, but I just like left it in here because you can use, you know, parts of other dyes as well to, um, you know, suit your needs. Check to see what you guys have and, you know, mix and match your sets for sure. I'm very, like, very encouraging of doing that. Mix and match old and new and, like, you can mix and match companies. Mine are probably more aligned with, you know, Mama Elephant and MFT for, like, line weights and stuff. You can still mix these with some, like, Lawn Fawn sentiments or you know, their swivel surprise die. That would be super fun with this Santa set. And that could be another option on my list. Um, but yeah, so I'm just like fishtailing the banner here. And then once that's done, we'll get on to the assembly of the card. So we're going to add the background just straight to the frame. And if you want, you could, again, use more foam tape. Um, add a little bit of dimension to it, make it this into a shaker if you want. Uh, you can add like an acetate sheet and some foam tape around the edges, which I will probably also do at some point. Um, and then I'm just gonna, you know, tuck Santa with his sentiment here, <clears throat> making sure that it's straight with my T ruler. And I think I kind of aligned it with the North Pole sign as well. And then once I have uh, Santa popped up to so foam tape, I'm going to adhere him to the card. And then we're going to start adding our controlled snow with acrylic paint and a dotting tool. 
Um, I like to do this, especially with these types of backgrounds, because like when you splatter the water, I always let it dry as much as possible on its own, just because it comes out a little bit better and it gives the uh, ink more time to react to the water. And then when you add the more like white snow layered on top of that, it kind of gives it a bit of depth and more of a like a bit of a bokeh look to it. Um, so it looks like there's, you know, some snow in the distance, some snow up close. And I just like really like doing this technique. It just really like helps set the scene. But that's pretty much our card for today, guys. Um, again, I'll show the original one that I did first and this one at the end. But this is my North Pole background die, which again will be available Friday at noon, September 20th, along with the Sassy Santa stamp set and coordinating dies and the magnet sheets that I will also have in store. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know your comments down below. How would you use this die? How would you do the clouds, the snow? You know, let me know. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future content or launches. And until next time, guys, thanks. Bye.